Pizza. <laughs> Don't start shit if you ain't ready to get hit. Well, allow me to drop some knowledge. I'm not gonna disagree. I saw that Sailor Moon outfit. What's up, everybody? What is really good? What's up? What's up? What's good, baby? <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Smokes. <laughs> Hold on. Everybody. How you doing, Mark? I'm doing all right. Busy, busy. How you doing? As always. Look at dazzling! Look at dazzling! <laughs> Thank you. Right now. Girl. <laughs> I love exactly. You. Okay. Ain't no problem with that. What's popping my BMF army? It's your favorite Jedi, the BMF goddess here. I hope that everyone is doing good. You know, um, despite the ongoing, you know, mess the world is currently facing, um. I'm on tonight. You can hear me, right, Julius? Oh yes, I hear you loud and clear, baby. Oh, as long as you can hear me. Um, I'm on to be able to okay, chop it up with and learn more about the devil's son-in-law, J Train, better known as Julius Smokes, pro wrestler slash pro wrestling manager. Signed to MLW right now and also works out of the project code name Wrestling, in which you guys see me promoting that. Welcome, Mr. Smokes. I. Baby. No, we do. How are you? How you doing today? Phenomenal, phenomenal. It's all about the kids right now. Um, I'm just marinating and serenading in Spanish Harlem. Talking to Lisa Lisa right now, you know what I mean? In the coat jail. What's good? <laughs> Thank you for making time for us. I know you're like super fucking busy. We've been planning this for months. So I really appreciate you being here today. And let me uh let me just point out definitely go Google your boy if you don't know Julius Smoke. You can learn more about him. But let me just point out my favorite thing about Julius is his ability is his ability to remain Julius Smokes. Um no matter where he is. <laughs> there is no turning it on for him because he never turns it off unlike many kayfabe offenders today definitely, that's the number one thing I respect about I respect you too mama you work hard, you play hard, you know what I mean hell yeah <laughs> so most, let's start from jump how old were you when you first 
Um, wow, I'm black a little more. I lost my birth certificate a minute ago, you know what I mean? So, I'm black a little. I, I forgot what age I was, but... Young kid, more or less? You know, I, um, I was young, living in Virginia, watching that Atlantic wrestling. You know what I'm saying? That nature boy Rick Flair, that Wahoo McDaniels, that Ricky the Dragon, Steve-O, Jay Rumblad, Sandra Slaughter, and Don Colonel, you know what I mean? Yeah. Who were your, and I jumped uh, right back. Who were your early inspirations? Wow. Um, see Ebony Diamond? Um, that's the lost father. Watch him in the middle of that wrestling was incredible. His footwork, his weight, courtmanship was incredible. I picked, I, I, I picked that up at a young age, noticing that, you know what I'm saying? Um, of course, um, you know, Nature Boy Rick Flair, uh, his pageantry, um, his promos is off the chain back then. It was raw, unfiltered. He you wanted know to get you to hate him and love him. Um, wow, this the um, Hector Guerrero, Manny Fernandez, Joker Dog, Hacksaw Butch Reed. I mean, wow, let's go, you know what I'm saying? Most that, most that. It's hard to choose. There's so many good, you know, goats out there. What, what year did you officially start? training and under who and where how did that yeah happen? um not 40 jamaica avenue um well actually a, a little bit before then you know what i'm saying probably like 90 97 96 around that time and i turned pro like in 98 you know with the long island wrestling federation bobby lambardi and who was but, the cleaner but, but it first started with Urban Wrestling Federation, Lot of the God. You know what I mean? All Latinos, baby. Latinos just working hard trying to get into the industry. They, they pull me in, and um, the rest is history. You know what I mean? Okay. And who did you train under? Wow. Um, Benjamin. Um, homicide. T.O.T. They like me, Jay Lover, Greg Reaper, um, Miss Lil you know what I'm saying? SAT, SAT, everybody, head and head going, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Put a to the tutor. Yeah. Yeah, 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 Let's get it, baby. Let's go. <laughs> I love this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a rare moment when you actually get to talk and say you want to do this. Um, what are some of the proudest moments in your career so far? Um, actually, it's um going to the Ring of Honor and becoming a World Tag Team Champion to Rocky and Ricky. And also uh, capture the world heavyweight title, managing homicide, doing you know, those kinds of tribulation, you know what I'm saying? Full of the rock wallers. Right. That was real big. That started off everything. They gave me my TV credits, and they gave me my motivation to show me that I could do what I do out here. The homicide ballroom was always sold out. Always sold out. From the supper club to the homicide ballroom, Philadelphia, no matter where he was at. We sold it out and we did our thing, man. And I love selling. I love to sell. <laughs> I love to make people look like a million bucks. You're good at it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah! <laughs> so, what, what made you transition into the manager role? For the love of money, we will steal our people. For the love of money, 
de Maridala. You know what I mean? Don't let money change you, baby. Um, they got on the game came to me, and um, he was like, "Hey, yo, I, I like your uh, your charisma and everything like that, and uh, I think you'd be better manager." Homicide gave me gave me uh, gave uh, my blessings. We was rock at the time anyway, and uh, I just went out there and started managing, and um, they liked it. Real talk. Okay. And you just felt like that was your niche. You felt like that was your. Thank you. Yeah, uh, no, 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 not necessarily. It was just that um, I guess that was my money call. I mean, everybody has they um they calling, you know what I'm saying? And um, when they see me out there doing what I do, I guess that's what it was. I still wrestle, you know what I'm saying? But uh, that's what my bread is better at right now. And commentating, I try to be like Jamie Fox, a, a triple threat. Out there, you know, commentate, managing, and uh, and also wrestle. Okay. A chameleon, you know, a chameleon. Yeah. That's yeah. But, but you know what? No. Like, yeah, I never spread. I never spread myself too thin. You know, I don't like working for too many organizations. You know what I'm saying? I only work for a couple to keep my maturity fresh. Okay. Let's go. What would you What would you say it takes to be a good manager? I, I personally, um, personally believe that you're awesome at it, and the way that you oh, help other people evolve, there's no denying it. No, uh, thanks for the um the love and aspiration right there, and uh, and and all that. Give my flowers while I'm living, you know. And I said I appreciate that. A lot of people like to give it to me when you're dead. You give it to me while I'm living, you know what I mean. But what makes a good manager is that this is use your imagination and live vicariously through through the through the crowd. I mean, um, I can't even tell you how to search it's his name. You know what I'm saying? Um, it has to be in you. I mean, what I do, it has to be in you. Some things are just premeditated. Yeah. You know, the studio game skills are the... Kind of like what, what you would you give to somebody else wanting to be in the manager role as well? Oh, 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 what about? Yeah. Oh, um, basically, um... Don't cut your nose despite your face. Uh, learn your talent, promote your talent, and um, just be in the right place at the right time. You know, that's what it's all about in life anyway, being in the right place at the right time and being the right people. And being everywhere, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, and also playing your position, you know what I'm saying? Playing position. Like I said, I'll cut you know, despite your face. Right. Um, know what you want and know what you're going out there. That's it. Go get it. Okay. Boom, write that down. <laughs> so, if an indie wrestling activist ever existed, I would definitely be one. Although many sports, you know, have minor leagues, uh, my wish is for indie wrestling to gain as much respect as any other pro wrestling. Only, wow. only I feel like, you know, many indie wrestlers don't respect the sport enough themselves. They, you know, you've been there, you've done that. What's something about the business you feel needs to change or improve? Um, just a recycle of the same talent. Basically, I see some people who they don't make it to WWE, they automatically go to AEW, go here, go here, and there. Right. That's not really creating your own new talent. You know what I'm saying? You got a lot of people in the Indies that hungry, that's waiting for the opportunity. Mantis, um, Ghost Shadow. I mean, the list goes on. You know what I'm saying? Um.
to change the um the order rhythms of who you bringing in and bringing out. Right. And plus, the contracts are really uh, I mean, they can let you go anytime they want to. So, what is it? You know what I'm saying? You get in when you fit in. You go in there and do what's told. And go out there acting like you about to die for that position. And nothing give it to you. And nothing lasts forever. Yeah. You know what I mean? Facts. Facts. That's straight. That's straight. Fucking. That a lesson right there. Well, too. I hope a lot of people heard that. <laughs> I just, you know why it is? Because you know, a lot of people, you know, say, "Oh, this is what they want to do." Like I said, I want, I want indie wrestling because, I mean, basically, that's where everybody starts that. Uh, to be as respected, you should treat every stage like it's a grand stage. That's that's at least. I know I'm just a fan, and you know, lightly involved in there, but. That's just the way I see it. If something is your passion, then you should give it your all, no matter if it's the smallest show or yeah. the biggest thing ever. <laughs> Absolutely, because the camera's always rolling and there's somebody always and looking at you. People. <laughs> you know what I mean? The camera's is always rolling, the people's looking at you, and, and, and the fans is always it's, it, it's photographic. They have a memory and they remember you. Regardless, so this guy out there give it a hundred ten percent. Give him something you. to remember, right? <laughs> you better. I know I do. Come here. Come here. <laughs> oh my God! Let's go! Oh! <laughs> You're best known for being the manager, as you stated earlier, of the rap. Yeah, um, our is new stable, the Rottweilers, uh, led by Homicide. Tell us um, how that came about and how long did that run go? Rottweilers, um, Vulture Squad, wow, uh, Black Mafia, Anthem, 5150, um, the list goes on, baby. Um, that started with Homicide, basically, we started at the LIWF at the Dove House, 940 Jamaica Avenue. Like back in um, 2000, 2001. See, that's why I said when the game told us that we was going to be together, it was like, all right, we do the rock wallers. It is what it is. You already got it going at the dog house and whatnot. Let's, let's bring it over here and commercialize it. And um, you know what I'm saying? But I love the money. And then it was later born at ROH. <laughs> yeah. And, um, we, you know, we had other members and take it across the, uh, it kind of formed like the Wu-Tang Clan to a certain extent, you know what I mean? You know, Greg Reefer is also a rock waller at one particular time, you know what I'm saying? You know, he was there, um, it was a, wow, come on, yo. <laughs> um, Benny Blanco, he was, he was definitely a rock waller. So, it's all about being, being part of a fraternity. It's yeah. like 5150. It's a fraternity, and I, I'm loving every minute of it, yo, for what it is. And uh, I am Dr. Smokes. Let me be your doctor. Let me be your doctor. Come, come. Let me be your doctor. It's like a large uh, brotherhood there. <laughs> Homicide. Low key. Rick Reyes. Ricky Reyes. Rocky Romero, Slugger, Grim Reaper, Benny Blanco, Bison, Jack Evans, mm. Jigsaw, Mercedes Martinez, mm -hmm. Francis, you've managed a lot of fucking people. Wow. I don't know. Absolutely. Blessing in the stars. So many Thank people you. under their belt. <laughs> well, you know, um, I was marinated and serenaded in MLW back in 2004 with the legendary Gary Hart. You know what I mean? I met him, and he gave me his blessings. Gary Hart, the legendary Gary Hart, gave me his blessings. And let me know what I was doing. He loved and appreciated. Right. He, put me, he put me pumped on that Mary Jane inside that limo, 2004, MLW. 
You know what I mean? In, uh, in Florida. Right. And um, I, I just never forgot it. I mean, I've always been a suction cup and I've always been like a biscuits dipped in gravy when it comes down to being around talent like that. I mean, I'm, I'm constantly learning, you know what I mean? I don't think I know it all. I'm in my own way, but I don't think I know it all. I'm constantly, I constantly want that knowledge. Feed me. Feed me, Seymour. Feed me. Feed me, Seymour. What would you say is the most difficult part of the business? I have been to you. <laughs> um... I mean, basically, look, you get in when you fit in. Uh, people put their position to either fail, to either fly or flop. You know what I'm saying? And uh, they give you enough rope to hang yourself. So, um, tread water thinly, and um, this stick will get you in. It's stay hungry. I got that tape worm in my stomach, cop. You know what I mean? I got to keep my name on my lease. You know, I don't live in the basement. You know, I got my own apartment living in NYC, living in Spanish Harlem. So that's my inspiration, keeping the hoop over my fucking head. And the girls don't like no bum-ass nigga. And I definitely ain't one of those. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> So, 2007, Homicide leaves ROH. Shortly thereafter, you leave with the Vulture Squad. Tell us about that. Well, um, at the time, I don't think Jack Evans wanted to sign the contract to the Ring of Honor. You know, it was one of the things. In fact, he was with uh, uh, Teddy Hart at the time. So, a lot of other things going on. So, we did not actually know that down. Uh, one of the ruckus, Mercedes Martinez, you know what I mean, uh, my mass vulture. Um, everybody just feel like we're trying to just, we're going to get different things. I land on my feet, the other wrestling the Federation. That was a good look right there. Uh-huh. Your Papa Chilo is there. Hi. You know what I'm saying? You already know. <laughs> Ma! I love the Mr. K, Joe. Bless him. Uh, as I said, that was a blessing in disguise right there. Um, uh, the other wrestling federation was on TV, pay per view, worldwide. Uh, they were looking for uh, syndication for different company for different TV shows and other like different pilots and different stuff like that. Uh, it worked out later on. You see them everywhere right now on TV. You know what I'm saying? Pluto TV, um, all the apps you can imagine. They're there. You know, so the dreams came to fruition and it's came years later, you know what I mean? With technology. This is where we are right now. You see us, we did. And um you know, basically after that, um Calvinist wrestling. That's big time right now. That's where I'm at. That's where we at. July sixteenth, Brooklyn, New York, baby. The well, you know what I mean? The black of the bear is sweeter than Jews. Okay. You know what I mean? Facts. Where did it get loose? You better call Tavo. <laughs> oh my God! Yeah. Yeah. So, August of last year, you signed with Major League Wrestling, along so with, along with Nice Boogie and Rivera. A new era of Elias, known as 5150, that um, was introduced by Conan. Talk to us about that. We'll go with that. How's it been? Things <clears throat> were always this. The world is mine. You know what I mean? The world is mine. Things were always this. Um. That was a great situation like that. I came together. Conan just gave me, uh, he emailed me, um, let me know he went, they was forming up a new 50 more 50. Um, Corbaro signed it all. And um, we came in and everybody was scared of the parts. We showed them they scared of the dark. 
You know what I'm saying? The Clan Brothers came through and swamped them. You know what I mean? And became the World Tag Team Champions. And the W World Tag Team Champions for 112 days. Yeah. And um, I came back there for the moments. Thank you, Kona and Nicole Bowler, for the opportunity to give me those moments. You know what I mean? Because the stairs in the hourglass is shrinking. Yeah. You know? Everybody don't live forever. You know what I mean? And um, I live in Virginia around a cemetery. I see people come and go. You know what I mean? And I, I'm probably the only person left in New York besides my sister and like one more cousin or two. While we was like 30 to 40 deep in New York. You know what I'm saying? I'm coming from? <laughs> it's real. And I can't celebrate with those people that saw me loving wrestling enough that they dead now. You know what I mean? So I'm actually celebrating with fans and everything, but my family, I really love wrestling. They dead. Those are the people I really wanted to see this. Right. That I made it. To the point I wanted to make it to. You know what I'm saying? I was I didn't grow up loving no WWE. I know I understand where the money's at, but I I was the NWA kid. Middle Atlantic wrestling, grew up in Virginia, yeah. Atlanta, Georgia, North Carolina. You know, that's what it was, you know, that's what it was about for me. Now the business side, yeah, WWE man, they give you the houses, the boats, and all that good shit. But you know, God gave me that within having this body that I have, this Mercedes Benz, this Porsche, this body I have, it's incredible. I take that instead. <laughs> it's marvelous. And we get to see a lot of that body sometimes when you're out there. You no. Know, like the big wow. <laughs> You crazy. You know, I got that from watching a lot of Nature Boy Rick Flair and Grizzly and North Carolina come over that still cage going against Ronnie Garvin. It's ass hanging out. <laughs> the cat, the crowd is going fucking crazy in North Carolina because Rick Flair's in his fucking ass. Those people that saw me loving wrestling enough that they dead now. You know what I mean? So I'm actually celebrating with fans and everything, but my family, I really love wrestling. They're dead. Those are people I really wanted to see this. Right. That I made it. To the point I wanted to make it to. You know what I'm saying? I was I didn't grow up loving no WWE. I know I understand where the money's at, but I, I was the NWA kid. Middle Atlantic wrestling. Grew up in Virginia, Atlanta, yeah. Georgia, North Carolina. You know, that's what it was, you know, that's what it was about for me. Now, the business side, yeah, WWE, man, they give you the houses, the boats, and all that good shit, but, you know, God gave me that within having this body that I have, this Mercedes Benz, this Porsche, this body I have, it's incredible. I took that instead. <laughs> it's marvelous. And we get to see a lot of that body sometimes when you're out there. You no. Know, like the big Wow. <laughs> you crazy. You know, I got that from watching a lot of Nature Boy Rick Flair, Grizzly and North Carolina, come over that still cage going against Ronnie Garvin. It's ass hanging out. <laughs> the cat, the crowd is going fucking crazy in North Carolina because Rick Flair's in his fucking element right now. You know what I'm saying? And when I get in that fucking element, that jungle just comes, like, just comes, just something just comes out of me. You know what I'm saying? And the girls love it. <laughs> go, go! And I see me Yep. <laughs> I'll play. I'll play. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta go see the shows in order to see this extra footage, guys. <laughs> oh, I'll go out there and give it a 380%, yo. I'll leave it all out there for the crowd to go back and say, yo, we had a great time tonight. That genius month was something else, but we also, we also enjoyed that match that, that he was involved in. Right. And that's what it's about. Catching lightning in a bottle. Come, come. <laughs> Guys, um, if you have any questions, just write them below. Somebody was trying to join, but yeah, if you have any questions, just write them below. He'll answer. Don't be scared. What's good, baby? Dr. Smoke is here. <laughs> You're also a music producer. Are you still working on music at this time? Um, well, I'm a composer. I'm not a producer. I write music and all that good stuff. But I don't own a record company registered to uh, New York City, Buddha Hill Records, LLC. And um, yes, it's doing great right now. We're on all the uh, digital musical sites. 
uh, Spotify, iHeartRadio, um, iTunes, Apple Music. I mean, everywhere that you could imagine. You know what I'm saying? It's put you in your smoke. So and the rest is history. You can find yeah, you with smoke. Say that again, baby. We can find you on all those platforms. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Just put in uh, Junior Smokes and everything pops up. They look like candy. So you got to taste that candy. <laughs> oh, yeah. VXS Wrestling. And oh. Mr. Paul Bailey says, I love you on the Project Wrestling Show. Thanks for attending that. <laughs> Blessing, blessing. Thank you, huh? Well, you know what I mean? You know how we do, man. You're in a warfare, baby. We hold you, but I broke your scar right now. We even hold you. Ah, 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 Oh, my God. Yo. The kids is about to get some treats they never had before in their life. Come, come up from my group, the Volta Squad, bro. The kids going to love us. We're about the kids right now, bro. <laughs> okay. Four guns, buddy. What do you want to be remembered for? They don't like it. Go ahead, buddy. What do you want to be remembered for, you know, long after your career? Um, being spontaneously original, entertaining. Full of energy, full of life. Show love when you get love back. Only color I see is green. You know what I'm saying? And my digital um and my digital money. You know what I mean? That's it, really. Respect. Respect that. You have you have any merch? And this merch, we could go find. Yeah, um, basically, my merch is just Google me. Just Google Junior Smokes. And you'll find my merch like that. Just Google me. J U L I U S S M O K E S. And um, everything will pop up. That's how I handle business, you know what I mean? Okay. And thank you, and I'm grateful for all my fans that buy anything for my sites. Gotta get me to <laughs> April. Um, I want to thank you again, Julius, and you know, giving us some of your time. I would love to see you again in the future. You know, you're the homie. You deserve everything that's happening to you and more. And I only want to see you keep going up. <laughs> <laughs> We declare the bear, the hound, coat arms. The kids love us, baby. The best of the We here. Coat Russell, TJ, Mahoney, thank you for the opportunity. You know what I mean? Um, come come out and see us. A lot of hoggy, young talent is there. You know what I mean? And uh, both the squad. You heard it, folks. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Have a good night. Yeah. The force be with y'all. We know like a 50 month five party. Because we don't stop.